First, thank you for watching this video and I know you're watching this because you want to know what cholesterol is all about or what is the fuss about cholesterol. As we have all known, HDL is the good cholesterol and LDL is supposedly the bad cholesterol. But do we know what is made up or what are these HDL, LDLs all about? So stay tuned and I will share with you more details. Okay first, what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is the type of lipid that is waxy-like and found in, inside our body. So all the cells, in fact actually the cell membranes, have a portion of it that is made by cholesterol. And you need this cholesterol to function, otherwise we cannot survive. And do you know that majority of the cholesterol is produced by our body? In fact, 80% of it is produced by our liver and our brain as well and some other organs. But this 80% comes essentially from our own production and 20% of it comes from our dietary intake like when we consume eggs or we consume food that is a cholesterol rich only 20% of it comes from that the majority is still produced by our body and another important thing is that cholesterol is needed to produce hormones such as uh, testosterone in males and estrogen in females and also progesterone so these are hormones that are essential for us and Cholesterol is an important building block for it. Now we get on to lipoproteins. So you always see HDL or LDL. HDL is actually high density lipoprotein. And LDL is low density lipoproteins. So in fact, HDL is actually a protein. When we talk about cholesterol, when we say LDL, we are not referring to the cholesterol itself. We are referring to the protein that contains the cholesterol, the triglycerides, the cholesterol esters, and also the uh, protein, apolipoprotein inside of it. So in fact, you look at lipoproteins as like a vehicle or a car, and the passengers inside that car are cholesterol and triglycerides at some of them. So when you measure, in fact, you are actually looking at the protein or the carrier of the cholesterol. So let's talk about high density lipoproteins. This is always known as the good cholesterol. So why is it good? It's good is because it's usually known to be the guy that transports cholesterol around the body, but importantly, also retrieves unwanted cholesterol back to the liver for processing or recycling or even um, destroying uh, the cholesterol if it's not needed anymore. So HDL's job is very important. It keeps the cholesterol balanced in the body. Then how about low density lipoproteins, LDL. This is the one that all of us refer to um, as the bad cholesterol. We are, we've always been taught or educated that LDL is bad. But we need to know why is it really bad. But before we get that, let me tell you a life cycle of um, an LDL molecule. First, the liver. As I mentioned, our body produces a lot of cholesterol. And the liver is one of the main organs that produces the majority of the cholesterol. So life as a LDL molecule first starts off as a VLDL, which is a very low density lipoprotein. Inside this Lipoprotein contains cholesterol and triglycerides as mentioned before and as it moves around in the body, it becomes smaller when it offloads some of its uh, passengers or cholesterol or triglycerides. So the next stage, it becomes an IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein, after which it gets to the one that we always know it as the low density lipoprotein, LDL because it always grows smaller as it offloads its uh, cargo, so to speak. As, it, as more organs require or muscles requires it, you will offload the cholesterol or any cells that requires you offload the uh, triglycerides or the cholesterol and it gets smaller and smaller. And in a normal process, it will go back to the liver uh, to be picked up by the uh, LDL receptors to be reprocessed again. When does it become a bad LDL? It becomes a bad LDL when it shrinks even further, when it gets damaged or sometimes what we call as oxidative stress damage on it. And this happens when glycation occurs 
because glucose blocks the ApoB100 receptors and this causes the LDL particle to shrink further and thus forms the small dense LDL particles. These are the ones that is dangerous to use because these LDLs, they are not being able to be picked up by the uh, liver so they stay in the bloodstream and as they go along the bloodstream uh, it becomes smaller and more damaged further oxidative stress occurs if you have even more glucose and these bad LDLs can actually go under the endothelium of your inner um, bloodstream lining and this is where sometimes plaques can form so that's why this is known as bad HD, LDL so once again when is LDL bad? LDL becomes bad when it undergoes oxidative stress such as I mentioned before where it can be a glycation occurring um, messing up the uh, receptors, ApoB receptors all right, and becomes small dense particles which can travel and burrow into the endothelium of our inner lining of our blood vessels which are damaging and can cause plaque formation. So again, more dense LDL particles remain in the bloodstream due to bad ApoB 100 receptors. Bottom line, in my opinion, is that you should opt for zero sugar or low carb diet which reduces glycation in LDL particles. You shouldn't worry about high L LDL but instead focus on the size of the LDL particle. The larger obviously is the better, the smaller are the ones that are damaged. Yes, you can get that tested out in Singapore. You can approach your doctor to ask them to see what is the size of the LDL particle. Reducing triglycerides, increasing your HDL should be the primary focus because this will improve your metabolic health. And having less triglycerides in your body means that you have less fats traveling inside your bloodstream which also relates to the fact that you will have less chance of it being formed as plaque in your endothelium or uh, in your blood cells in the lining wall. So this having low triglycerides will actually reduce the risk even further. So you should actually focus on that. So I hope this helps. I'm trying my best to explain as layman as possible. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but I want to share with you what I've researched online and why I think that this cholesterol myth or this understanding of cholesterol needs to be shared further with everybody so you understand exactly what those results stand for.